Welcome to Lovers of Jesus Ministries International. The message you are about to hear is from the Lord's anointed Dr. Edward Irobi, the man with the mandate to proclaim the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and to raise an army for the Lord in this end time. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. You are welcome once again to our Friday night revival meeting. Today, it has pleased the Lord to help us to continue where we stopped um, last week. Remember last week, um, the Lord blessed us with a topic that says, why revival tarries? Taking into cognizance, um, the sin of uh, variance, how the sin of variance as part of the work of the flesh, you know, could um, hinder revival in the body of Christ. So suffice it to know that we are going to continue um, uh, and down the road, you know, to examine another work of the flesh as provided in the uh, uh, word of the Lord in Galatians chapter 5 verses, uh, I think verses 19 to 21. Before we read the passage of the Bible where we have to focus tonight, shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we worship you. We welcome your presence to our uh, our word of exhortation tonight. Father, I pray that you speak to us through your word. Let our lives be transformed. Change us into the image of your Son and be glorified in our discussion, even as we pray tonight in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Beloved, I know you must have known a late to if not so much, about uh, the topic of tonight. The topic of tonight um, is known as uh, Why Revival Tarries, Emulations, Paying Attention to the World Known as Emulations. I know when you hear the word emulations, a lot of things may be going across your mind. But um, I'm going to you know, dissect it a little bit so that we'll be on the same page. Uh, before going into the definition of the word emulation, I thought it necessary to bring some of you, you know, on the same page alongside the others. If you are logging in for the first time and you stumbled across this video on why Revival Tarry's emulation, I want to define the word revival. In case you may be asking, what does revival stand for? Why are you combining revival and emulation? You know, so we are combining revival uh, with emulation because um, the Lord wants to revive his people. And the Lord has spoken to us that Sin is the hindrance to the revival move of God in his church. And for some weeks, we have been exploring the different works of the flesh that could hinder the flow of God's power. That's why today we thought it necessary to examine emulation as uh, a hindrance to the move of God in the church. First of all, let's define the word revival as we have been doing. The word revival stands for renewal or awakening. So, and we have been establishing the fact that it is impossible to restore something that never existed. And now the Lord wants to let us know that this message is for his people that must have had this experience in the past. They, they may have uh, experienced um, renewal. They may have uh, experienced uh, awakening, but down the road, they have slipped aside. You know, tonight, the Lord wants to let his people know that I want you to be new. I want you to be renewed. Where you were before when I made you brand new. When my zeal was bubbling in you, I want you to go back to that place. I don't want you to stay in this position where you are right now. And again, the word awakening, the Lord wants us to awake unto righteousness, peradventure, if we have been asleep. 
because the Lord wants the church that has been asleep to be what? Awake. So somebody may say, what are some of the words we can uh, we can substitute, uh, uh, you know, when we want to um, discuss um, renewal, we can use the word renovation, restoration, re modernization, or improvement as substitute. So tonight, I want you to move alongside with me for us to see why the Lord needs to renew his people why the Lord needs to help his people to be awake unto righteousness so that they will not continue to be in that sleeping position. Uh, we may uh, um, come up again with a question, what is the purpose of revival? Why is it that the church is talking about revival? You know, the purpose of revival is about God. God is the purpose. It's all about the Lord. You know, whether the revival is at the personal level or church level or national level, it's all about the Lord. It's all about God's glory. When we talk about the purpose of revival, you know, as God's children, we supposed to be full of God's glory. And um, when we are full of God's glory and uh, the Lord wants to use us wherever we are, the glory of God moves from us to our neighborhood. The glory of God moves from us to our community. The, the glory of God moves from us to our church. That's how it is. So it's all about the glory of God. When God uh, uh, wants to revive his people, when God wants to revive his people, he is the one that has the timing. So the timing is in God's hands. And remember, when the Lord sees that we are ready, now he will come in to propel us, to push us, to walk with us, to see the need we have to move away from where we are and then to go and bring change in the lives of other people. Remember, when we started this series, the Lord started talking to us that the problem of the church is what? The flesh. If we remember where we explored in the past um, from the book of uh, Romans chapter, chapter 8, verses 6 to 8, the Lord tells us in that portion of the scriptures, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither can, can be. Because the church has gone into carnality. The flesh took over the church. The church now mindful of the things of the flesh, the things of the world, not mindful again about the things of the Spirit of the Lord. That's why it seems that the glory of God is not seen in the church. Now the Lord is now telling us he does not want us to be carnal. He wants us to be spiritually minded instead of carnally minded. And um, on that note, this takes us to our test. We have a test we have been exploring the book of Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. I want you to go with me. Um, right now, we are in verse number 21, which means that um, we are almost coming to, I think in some weeks from now, we should be ending this um, half uh, uh, part of our series. So let's go to verse number 19, Galatians chapter 5, verse uh, we are going to read from 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you, before, as I have also told you in time past, 
that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's the word of the Lord. Now the Lord is telling us all, all these works of the flesh enumerated here. Anyone that indulges in all this will not inherit the kingdom of God. And now the Lord is saying, because of these works of the flesh, the move of God is not seen in the church. And the Lord is saying, my children, I want you to get information about all this so that the flesh will be mortified, so that these works of the flesh will be put to death. None of them will surface in your lives because you are my chosen generation. You are my royal priesthood. I did not create you to walk in the flesh. I created you. I saved you from sin for you to live and walk in the spirit so that you will bring glory to my holy name. You may ask me now, Brother Edward, you are talking about the word emulation. What does emulation stand for? I will give you a simple definition and then we shall go into another definition by uh, Merriam Webster's uh, dictionary. Um, the, the word emulation may be defined as efforts to match or surpass a person or achievement, typically by imitation. Mm, typically by imitation. Um, that's how someone defined the word emulation. So, and uh, I want to uh, mention this ahead of time before I pre present uh, Miriam Webster's uh, definition that um, emulation, this emulation has um, what I will call the negative uh, component and the positive component. So the negative component is the one that is aligned with the flesh. You know, the negative one is aligned with the flesh, whereas the positive one is one that can challenge us to emulate righteousness, emulate holiness of the Lord and walk in the spirit. But the one that is of the flesh is what the Lord is telling us to do away today. Now, Miriam Webster's uh, dictionary's definition. Miriam Webster's dictionary defines the word emulation to be to strive to equal or excel, to strive to equal or excel. Now, another definition has it to be to imitate by means of an emulator. To imitate by means of an emulator. Then the last um, definition says to equal or approach equality with. All right. This happened to be the Webster's uh, dictionary um, meaning for emulation. Now, the word emulation occurs um, twice in the New Testament. How does that sound? In the whole New Testament, the word emulation, you will see it two times. Once in a bad sense and once in a good sense. As I mentioned before. So we are going to see the good sense of it and then later on, we're going to see the bad sense of it. Uh, but tonight, the Lord is challenging us to deal with the bad sense of it. Because that bad sense of it is of the flesh. The enemy has used it since, you know, the time of the children of Israel. You know, even before that time to destroy a lot of lives today. The Lord is telling us, hey, my children, I want you to pay attention to this so that um, it will not have anything to do in your life. So right now, let's check out the word of the Lord in the book of Galatians, where we read chapter 5, verse 20. You know, here, the King James Version um, translation of the word zealous, zealous, 
uh, represent um, zeal, earnestness, or enthusiasm, where it is classed among the works of the flesh and signifies this stirring up of jealousy or envy in others because of what we are or have or profess. So I want to let you know, that's how the world emulation could be used. Staring off, you know, staring up what? Jealousy or envy in people because of what they are or what they have or profess. Do you remember where this thing can be seen in the Bible? We have a lot of them. But I just want to take you on a little journey to the book of Acts of the Apostles. You know, Brother Paul was on this missionary journey and he encountered some Jews. And some Jews, you know, they, they, they stirred up jealousy and they were envious as if they, you know, they, they wanted to, to prove a, a point. We are God's chosen people. And at this particular point, they lost the information, the word that the Lord gave to Moses in the book of Deuteronomy. Why they don't have to, you know, puff up they have forgotten that the Lord has his standard. And some of them, they were not meeting up to the standard of the Lord. So let's check the word of the Lord in the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 45. But we are going to read 44 to 46. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city. Remember, Paul was on a missionary journey here preaching to several Jewish people. And now, the next Sabbath day, people, a lot of people came to hear the word of the Lord from Paul. And I read again. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy. I want you to mark this statement. They were filled with envy and speak against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. I want you to mark all these things. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Can you see why Brother Paul and Barnabas, in that their missionary journey, they told the Jews, hey, 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 see how you people are behaving. You people that are supposed to uphold the word of the Lord. We are telling you that you are living in the flesh. You don't have to do that, but you don't understand. But because you are not sensitive to know what the Lord wants you to know. Now we are going over to the Gentiles that we perceive will appreciate the gospel of the kingdom. We believe you have been blessed by this message. Please join us every Friday for our revival prayer meeting and on Sunday for our Bible study. You can also follow us on Facebook at Lovers of Jesus Ministries International. For prayers and can study, please call plus 147054017. You can also visit us on our website www.lgmhi.net. Remain blessed. Jesus is coming soon.